we've introduced three new products today. We have a sparkling sake, we have the Hakkai-san Daiginjo Luxury Sake, and we also have a sake called a Kijoshu, which is a sweet dessert type sake, kind of like an ice wine. And the reaction has been amazing. And I'm very happy they're bringing these really new and exciting styles over. One big trend I'm seeing is unpasteurized sake, namazake. More and more breweries are coming out with a namasake. These are Genshu namas, so they're very full-bodied, very green, very vibrant, totally delicious, very drinkable in the springtime. And I, I just love them, they're so good. Kikusi is from Niigata, which is one of the most famous regions for sake. And we're really famous for namazake, which is a type of unpasteurized sake. Unpasteurized sake is very fresh and lively and fruity, but it's also very delicate. That's why this sake has to be stored in a can and sold in a can, so because it protects it from the light. Obviously by cutting out the light it makes the sake last for longer, and well, everyone's really enjoying it here today. Basically, we have a concept. Concept is uh, we want to tell real Japanese culture. It's kind of yakitori. Of course, basically Japanese culture is authentic style, but we try to like you know brand new New York tasty. You know, it's a new idea. Ramen was kind of grown and developed through local ingredients, and so whereas in America we don't have we're not able to source all the same ingredients. It's actually quite tough to replicate the same exact thing. And so, um, for chefs, we'd like them to, you know, respect what the Japanese have done with ramen, but also use that basic concept, but use local ingredients that we can get in the U.S. and build their ramen. Thank you very much. My place is in その場所がですね、果物やあのそういったトマトあのいや野菜などのそう名産地なんです。やはりあの地元のものを使って何かいいお酒ができないかと考えまして、今回そういったお酒を作りましてあの皆さんに支援して飲んでもらって美味しいか